The normal electrical impulse starts in the SA node up here and travels through the atria quite rapidly until there's a hold up at the AV node. The purpose of the hold up is to allow time for blood in the atria to drain into the ventricles before the electrical impulse continues on and passes through the AV node where it will divide into left and the right bundles and so the wave will travel then down the left and right bundles at the same time. This shows the normal PR interval being between 3 and 5 small squares and the normal QRS complex being under 3 small squares. Now in this ECG the only abnormality is a prolonged PR interval. This is therefore first degree heart block. So in first degree heart block there's a little bit of ischemia here so that the PR interval is longer than usual which means the AV node is delaying a bit more than it should. However every single wave will get through this point. On the other hand in second degree heart block the ischemia here is slightly worse so that some of the beats don't get through. In this ECG, you can see that the PR interval changes, and then there's a missed beat. If you look carefully, you can see the PR interval lengthening with each beat. Just before the missed beat, the PR interval is at its longest, and then there's a missed beat. This is timed second degree heart block, because some beats are conducted and some aren't, and when you have a variable PR interval, it's called Mobitz type 1. On the other hand, in this situation, we have regular P waves with every other beat conducted. So again, some beats are conducted and some aren't, but in this situation, there is no change in the PR interval. So this is also secondary heart block, but this is Mobitz type 2, and in this situation, 2 to 1 block, because every other P wave is conducted with the alternate ones not conducted. Now you might be forgiven for thinking that this is similar with regular P waves running at about twice the rate of the corresponding QRS complexes, but in fact it's completely different because there's low, no link at all. So if you look at this tracing here, you'll see the P waves are running at a regular rate, but in fact at this point here, the P wave is almost inside the QRS complex, and in this one here you can't even see it, so that the QRS complex and the P wave are at exactly the same time. This can only happen if the P waves and the QRS complexes are not associated at all, and therefore this must be complete heart block. In other words, no waves getting through at all. The ventricular rate is about half that of the atrial rate, but that's complete coincidence. So that in fact, the measured rates are 43 and 87, but in fact, there is a complete block. So what that means is there must be a complete block at this point here. So the atria are doing their own thing, running at, in this situation, 87 beats per minute, and the ventricles are doing their own thing from this point here, running at about 43 beats per minute. Now sometimes, as we saw, the atria and ventricles contract together, and if that happens, this valve will be closed, which means when the atrium contracts, the blood's got to go gushing up this way, and that would cause a cannon wave in the JVP. So in summary, in first degree heart block, all the waves are conducted with an increased PR interval. In second degree heart block, some of the waves are conducted and some aren't. And in third degree heart block, or complete heart block, no waves are conducted at all. Third degree heart block is the time when you will see cannon waves in the JVP.